Ilya Calderon. Well, I spoke with her. She's the first Afro-Latina to anchor a high-profile newscast for a major Hispanic broadcast network in the United States. She's telling her story of overcoming prejudice and propelling forward in her new memoir titled My Time to Speak, Reclaiming Ancestry and Confronting Race. Her book starts off with a dramatic scene from a 2017 interview with a KKK leader who called her a racial slur and threatened her. So why did she decide to start with this eye-opening scene? Here's what Elia had to say. Well, I, I think it, the, the decision about writing my memoir has uh, to be with being a mother, having a daughter that was um, already facing racism, having my nephew and nieces facing racism at, a, at an early age. The fact that I did the, um, the interview confirmed the desire that I had to, to, to write about this problem and to try to, you know, to do something to eradicate racism in our society. And I'm not talking only about the United States, I'm talking about the entire America, the entire Latin America, Hispanic America, where racism is well present and is a very important part of the upbringing on, I can say, you know, every single household. And Elia, I really want to commend you for starting there, because as a journalist, as someone who interviews people for a living, I can't imagine being put in that position and finishing that interview. Um, but I want to switch gears here because you tackle racism head on in your memoir. And you talk about how you were finally comfortable to speak out at this point. You feel like you don't have any fear. So you mention your daughter, you mention your nieces and nephews. What else got you to this point of fearlessness? I think the fact that I the fact that I have a platform and and my voice can resonate and and um, my message can get through you know further and and you know for me is an obligation is is my duty to speak about racism and to try to do something to eradicate to show people that you know representation matters having me as the the first. Um, Afro-Latina to anchor a major newscast in Spanish in the United States matters. And um, when, when girls see me on their screen, they think that, you know, they can dream big, they can achieve their dreams, they can work hard for their dreams. But also on the, on the other side, on the side of the decision makers, it is important to open minds and to create awareness of the lack of representation and the important role, role that they have in making decisions and, and believing in, in diversity. I want to touch on that in just a bit, but first I also want to ask you about your background because you have such an interesting story. You were born in a small town in Colombia where you were no stranger to colorism, and then you later moved to Miami in order to report for Univision. Um, so what was that like for you, and what sort of was the same and what was different when you moved to the U.S. from Colombia as far as the racial tensions? The, the history of racism in Colombia and in the United States is, is, is completely different. We didn't have a, a civil rights movement like, like the United States had in, in the 60s. Um, but but we, we have something in common. It's like the, the fact that history wants to whiten history and, and erase the importance of the black history in, you know, in Colombia and in the United States, both countries. So coming here, it was different for me and it was hard. Um, as a Latina, I came here and sometimes they see you like too dark to be Latina, too black to be Latina and too Latina to be African-American. So. It's, it's, it's a little bit confusing for, for people, not for me, but I wanted to be identified as Afro-Latina and did, that didn't happen until very recently where, when you know, our voices are being raised and, and our community, our Afro-Latina community is taken into account as a part of, of the Hispanic community within you know, the Hispanic community. 
you really are a symbol of intersectional feminism in so many ways. And you mentioned being the first Afro-Latina anchor. Was it at Telemundo, I believe, where you were anchoring for the first time and you're making headlines because of how you looked and because of the pervasive nature of colorism within Latinx TV? Um, so I'm wondering for you, what is it like to experience the George Floyd protests and covering that and also seeing the anti-racism movement, not only here in the U.S., but moving abroad to other countries? It is. It, it was hard for me to 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 experience and to have to cover, you know, the, the issues after um, uh, George Floyd's death. Um, for us, it was our obligation to educate our community and to explain um, all the facts and the history of racism in the United States and why the situation, uh, and you know, the reason why everything happened and the, the reason why the social protest erupted in, in that way. So for us was, a, a um, you know, in, in the matter of we need to educate our Hispanic community a little bit more about the history of racism in the United States. We need to tell them and to show them and to talk about the fight of Dr. King, Rosa Parks, her resistance, and why it's important that we are united in the fight for human rights, because these are not rights for the African-American community. We are talking about human rights. We are talking about rights for all of us. And when one community benefits from the rights, it's the entire community that get benefits from it. And I'm not going far, but talking about the, the, um, the, um, the movement in the 60s, as Latinos, as Hispanics, as immigrants, we benefit from that movement too. We benefit from that what mo that movement achieved. I doubt that without that fight, our kids, our immigrant kids, could, uh, could could go to a public school or drive on a public uh, bus or go to a public uh, school or, or, or library or park. So at one point, we need to recognize that it was important and, and it is important for us. And when we fight for rights, we need to fight for rights for all of us as a society. And we've seen calls from viewers of Latin TV to have more nuance and more perspective from Black journalists when it comes to covering these things. So how are you hoping to change the TV landscape and these newsrooms to be more inclusive and also do that for the next generation? Look, it is, you know, it is great that we have uh, Afro-Latinos and we have Black anchors. And, and uh, the same way, I think there need to be more. And my duty, my job, it is to open doors and to make sure that more minorities and more Afro-Latinas and more Blacks, we can see more Blacks on TV, we can see more Blacks on the screen, and we can see more Blacks you know, in the decision-maker positions. That was Univision News anchor Elia Calderon for her new book, My Time to Speak, Reclaiming Ancestry and Confronting Race.